clamped in a vice, piece of ordinary building steel, and I've got a burner under it from a toy steam engine. There we go, all, all the way over to here, I've got a load. There's the load. And as you can see, the end of it is just off the table. Now if I hold the camera there, you'll notice as time passes by, the end of it will come to rest on the table. There's the whole thing there. It's a steel bar under load. And it is getting closer and closer to the table. The reason why that is happening is that the heat from the fire, although not nearly enough to melt the steel, is enough to cause it to creep. And that creep, or that slowly giving way under load, is uh, the problem with uh, builders and skyscrapers. There it's landed on the table. See it's no longer springing up and down, it has landed on the table. Oops. I've got a fire from a toy steam engine. It's not even red hot. It's not even red hot. And yet, the steel has now descended onto the table. Let's move the weight back. So that once again, let's move the weight back. There's the end of the bar. Well, right, it's, it's, uh, I haven't got space on the, I haven't got space on the bench to put the camera further out, so there it is. There's the bar. Right, I'll try and stop it springing up and down. There, there's the bar. Now, oh. I move this round so that the dimple on the fan is lined up at the end of the metal bar. You can see by the fact that it's bouncing up and down that the material is still springy. The metal has its springiness. It's not melting. It's not going soft. But as you can notice, if you look part slowly, it is going lower and lower and lower. That's because it is creeping. Now when, when you lose the fireproofing from the steel in the building, because you have it knocked off in an explosion, and then you subject it to heat, the weight of the building, the, 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 the heat of the fire, causes the steel to gradually give way. That phenomenon is called Greek, uh, grief, grief, <laughs> creep. That phenomenon is called gr uh, creep. And uh, there's plenty of stuff on Google about steel and creep properties. And uh, in fact, you'll find that it, it, it actually starts to creep at around 350 degrees centigrade, which is uh, way below red heat. It's 350 degrees centigrade is easily achievable, even in quite modest fires. As you can see, once again, the steel has come to rest on the table. So I'll move the weight back making a load on the beam less so that the beam springs up again and you'll see that even as I'm lessening the load making the load less and less the steel still continues to creep and bend Slid the weight back now, so the piece of steel is now just at the top of the camera, and it's bouncing up and down. It's still springy. It's still got its springiness. It's still behaving in the way that you'd expect steel to behave. And uh, let's stop. Try and stop it bouncing a bit. There. It, it, it's it's behaving in the way that you'd expect steel to behave. It's springy. It's strong. It's it's metallic. And yet, because I've heated it up, you will see that it's starting to creep back into the frame. I've made the load less so that the uh, it's not carrying the heavy load it was. But as you can see, it is still creeping, creeping, creeping downwards. 
and you can see that because the bar is entering the field of view which is uh, caused by the fact that it's sagging under the weight of the uh, the load what'll be interesting is before the film runs out I've got 10 minutes before the film runs out from start to finish I'll take the weight off and I'll take the beam out of the vise and we'll see where the we'll see where it's been bending it hasn't been bending where it's held by the vise which is the point of maximum stress it's bending where it's been it's bending where it crossed over the fire so you can see once again the bit the, the steel is entering the frame Now the heat source is simply a methylated spirits burner from a toy steam engine. Not exactly the hottest and most ferocious burner you've ever seen. Not by any means. Methylated spirits burners are quite benign things. So if I can achieve enough heat to bend steel, to make steel creep as a cheapo toy steam engine burner, then uh, a ferocious blazing fire fed by air tunnelling up elevator shafts like chimneys would be more than enough to make steel heat enough to hot enough to creep and uh, the fires in the World Trade Center were easily enough to achieve uh, red heat uh, this hasn't got anywhere near red heat the metal bar is not growing uh, glowing red yet you can still see that it is sagging into the view of the camera I'll take the camera over and I'll follow the beam back. Oops. There's the fire. Quite an ordinary methylated spirits toy steam engine fire. The maximum strain would actually be there where it's at the held by the vice. Not there where the heat is. Yet even though we're not at maximum load and even though I've slid the weight back a bit to make the load even less it is still creeping as you can see the weight was going the the beam was going back into the view of the camera because it was sagging steel is an interesting stuff in that even before it starts to creep it loses its strength at any kind of temperature steel in the Antarctic and other places where it's really really cold is significantly more brittle than steel at room temperature Steel at room temperature, in fact, has the ideal set of qualities for building this material. Uh, any significantly below room temperature, that steel can become excessively brittle to the point where engineers have to be careful when designing bridges and other structures to operate in very cold weather. It has even said that the rivets on the Titanic were excessively brittle due to the cold, one of the reasons why they all snapped. So from extra cold to room temperature steel is already starting to go a bit soft as it were but to the point where it's actually ideal for building it's got the right degree of qualities for building then you start to warm it up which is what a blacksmith does all a blacksmith does in order to make steel easier to work is to warm it up in, in, a, in a fire now when you warm it up to red heat it's like plasticine but even at these moderately cold relatively cool temperatures you know that is not a hot fire not by any means it's a methylated spirits burner and uh, methylated spirits burners are not the hottest burners in the world and yet it has been hot enough to make this piece of steel give way now as the camera runs out I'll take the weight off and we'll put the fire out that down there and let's slowly I'll put the camera down there there's the bar it was held there in the vise and there it's slightly blackened you can see where it's been blackened if you hold it end on can definitely see that the bar has slightly bent at the point where I was applying the fire 
try and line it up with that crack in the cupboard behind. I ran out of film, so I've started film again. There's the bar. Now, try it has, the bend is very slight, so I need a flat surface to compare it against. So we'll find something, see if we can find a straight edge. There's a straight edge there. I'll turn the bar upside down. There you can see the scorch mark where I had the fire on it. If I hold it flat, hold it flat against there. If I follow it down with a camera, if you go past the bit where the fire was, you can see it starts to come away from the uh, straight edge. That's flat there. You go past the bit where the burner was and you see it comes away. So it wasn't bending at the point of maximum stress. It was bending where it was coming out of the... Uh, coming past the uh, fire. So, uh, at least I've got a right collection of toy steam engines and goodness knows what. And uh, it is surprising, even to me, how little temperature you need before steel starts to warp and fail and lose its strength and give way. Anybody who's in any doubt of what happened on September the 11th, 2001, should uh, realise that uh, steel, brilliant though it is as a building material, does not like fires. <laughs>